WrestleMania! They're back in business, and business is... Eh. I'm Chris Wolver, the wrestling blogger who always tells it like it is. Whereas last year, WrestleMania was before a nowhere near capacity crowd, this year will be before a nowhere near capacity crowd. But there will be a crowd. A heavily spaced crowd, a checked for fever crowd, a hopefully masked crowd, and judging from the weather reports, a fairly wet crowd with scattered thunderstorms storms in the Tampa area for both nights. But a crowd nonetheless. And the first crowd for a non-NXT event is a step in the right direction. So let's get right to it, shall we? Here are my predictions for WrestleMania 37. Well, they announced it as first, so might as well get it over with and do a sort of reverse bell curve for the rest. Start with night one and the WWE Championship match between Bobby La... Wait, I gotta get this right. The almighty WWE Champion Bobby Lashley and Drew McIntyre. Now, had Lashley and the MVP not closed down the Hurt Business by ditching Sheldon Benjamin and Cedric Alexander, I probably would have leaned Lashley's way. Then again, I'm wondering if McIntyre's time is truly up as champ. I mean, I'll agree that the way he lost the title was rather heinous and ridiculous, and the way Lashley won it was equally ridiculous. But Lashley's been waiting as long as McIntyre to be the main man in the WWE, so why would he give it up so easily? Decisions, decisions. Well, chances are Benjamin and Alexander might distract Lashley enough for Drew to get the Claymore in. Plus, I'm sure Lashley will be back in the hunt sooner than later. Winner and new WWE Champion, Drew McIntyre. SmackDown Women's title, Sasha Banks versus Bianca Belair. I predicted her correctly to win the Royal Rumble, and now the EST of the WWE is here. I definitely think she has a puncher's chance, and I am most certainly rooting for her, but here's the thing. Banks has been a veteran of WrestleMania's for a good while now, but she has yet to win a match at WrestleMania. And get this. All four matches she was involved in at WrestleMania were for titles and had more than two women involved. The bosses do. And with this being her first one-on-one, -on -one, she doesn't have to worry about others stopping her from wresting her opponent opportunity away. <laughs> Otherwise, it'll be very hard to consider her a boss, let alone legit, ever again. So go get her, Banks. Oh, but... Make sure to shake hands and or hug afterwards. Winner and still champions, Sasha Banks. Raw Tag Team Championships, The New Day vs. AJ Styles and Omos. Now, this is a dream team for you. A man who debuted at Royal Rumble a few years ago and a monster of a man who will have his first match at WrestleMania. Truth be told, it's about time that Omos got out of his three-piece suit and into some proper wrestling attire. Though... Why do we get the feeling he's not going to do much in this match? Seems to me that he'll let Styles do most of the work and only come in when Kofi Kingston or Xavier Woods has Styles on the ropes. Literally. But I promise you this, if Omos gets tagged in at any point, it's all over. And since this is one of those veteran team versus first te time team for title matches, you can see where this is going. Winner and new champs, AJ Styles and Omos. Steel cage match, Braun Strowman versus Shane McMahon. How in the hell does Shane get involved in WrestleMania matches almost every year? <coughs> and more to the point, why does he? And even more to the point, didn't he lose a career-ending match to Kevin Owens 18 months ago? Oh, wait, what? No. Those matches never stick. Just ask Randy Savage and Shawn Michaels. Anyhow... Shane has a two WrestleMania streak, but Strowman has a three WrestleMania streak, including an Andre the Giant Battle Royal win and two title match wins. One with a preteen as his partner. Of course, Shane will probably have Elias and Jackson Ryder nearby to stop Strowman from exiting the cage and maybe give Shane O'Mac a guitar for some blunt force trauma, but 
My mind is flashing back to a Saudi pay-per-view between Rock Lesnar, Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns. So why am I imagining Strowman sending McMahon literally through the cage? And McMahon getting the victory because his feet hit the floor first. Stranger things have happened. Winner is Shane McMahon. <sighs> Pardon. Seth Rollins versus Cesaro. To see Seth in a mid-card like this, it almost makes me cry. Almost. I suspect he's at the time in his career where he needs to push others. But the thing is, Cesaro came into the WWE just about the same time as Rollins and The Shield. So, what's the point? And come on, you honestly think Cesaro is going to... Cesaro spin Rollins a hundred times? I'm no doctor, but I'm pretty sure CTE doesn't just come from blows to the head. This is hardly a WrestleMania-worthy match as far as I'm concerned, and the two will have to work extra hard to make people believe otherwise. Rollins needs to push more than Cesaro, in my opinion, so... Winner is Seth Rollins. Tag Team Turmoil Match to decide number one contenders for the WWE Women's Tag Team Titles. Well, at least the titles have officially moved away from kickoff status, it seems. Oh, wouldn't surprise me if this match is the kickoff match for night one. Let's face it, all of these teams deserve a shot as much as, well, any two women who have decided, let's form a tag team and go after the titles. Of all of them, I dare say Riot Squad 2.0 and Brooke Rose have the most experienced as teams. Lana only joined Naomi because she was tired of being powerbombed through tables alone. And Natalia T Tamina are the powerhouses. Billy Kay and Carmella, well, I thought they'd be the wild card, but... Nah. Since the winners are going after heels on night two, they'd more, like, more than likely have to be faces. So, I'm backing Lana and Naomi. Come on, WWE. Give Lana something to bring home to her hubby to make, her pr to make him proud. Bad Bunny and Damian Priest versus Miz and Morrison. Saw this coming a mile away, and no doubt about it. I knew they wouldn't let the Grammy winner go at it alone. Again, I feel Priest is going to do the heavy lifting in this match, keeping the former tag champs at bay for most of the match. When Bad Bunny does get in, he might show some skills, but I suspect he's still got a ways to go if he really wants to return to WrestleMania 38. Personally, I don't see that happening, so I might as well give him the lone W in his career. <clears throat> Winners are Bad Bunny and Damian Priest. Night two. Start at the bottom, work our way up. Kevin Owens versus Sami Zayn. Uh, yeah, this came out of nowhere, didn't it? Seriously, we had enough of the Owens-Zayn feud several years ago, thank you very much. Just because Owens couldn't get the Universal title doesn't mean we have to sub Check the crowds to this old hat. Knowing the WWE, this might be the palate cleanser before the main event. Zayn is probably still a coward, even without the Intercontinental title. And at the same time, he'll probably find a way to use it to his advantage. Winner is Sami Zayn. Randy Orton versus The, the Fiend. Fiend. The final chapter. We hope. Now that Bray Wyatt has gotten over his... Uh, Immolation, as it were. He'll probably be back in nigh on unstoppable mode like he was before Goldberg beat him. I was half hoping this would be like the Firefly Funhouse match last year, save that it would mean Orton would retire and become a full-time actor afterwards. I'm not sure what Orton can do to this Shishio Makoto, Makoto wannabe to keep him down, maybe use a fire extinguisher or something. <laughs> There's one thing for certain, burning white to ashes has only managed to piss him off. Winner is The Fiend. <laughs> WWE Women's Tag Team Title Match, Shanna Baszler and Nia Jax versus the winner of the turmoil match on night one. I know I said this for my stand deliver picks, but I honestly think ba Baszler and Jax are going to lose the titles in that match, no matter who survives the turmoil. And again, I'm hoping it's Lana and Naomi, but... Even if it's Natalya and Tamino or Kane Carmella, I think Baszler and Jax have held the titles for far too long. If this keeps up, there'll be nothing without the belts. And that would be a shame 
for Baszler, not so much for Jax, but definitely for Baszler, is relatively unnecessary. I find the WWE Women's titles to be. I want to see someone else hold this those big white belts. So I'm picking the winners of the ter turmoil match, whoever they may be, to win the titles. United States Championship. Riddle defends against Sheamus. Yeah, uh, Riddle, uh, Jeff Spicoli called. He wants his cool buzz, br buzz back, bro. And for goodness sake, ditch the scooter! I know that the U.S. title is the most overlooked title in the WWE, but give it some dignity, and maybe you won't have to fight on the kickoff of pay-per-views. Oh yeah, I'm sure this will be the kickoff for night two. Sheamus deserves so much better. But then again, Sheamus seems to be at the point where he needs to push rather than be pushed. Hate to say this, but winner and still champ is Riddle. Nigerian drum match, whatever the hell that is, for the Intercontinental title, Big E versus Apollo Crews. <laughs> I'm guessing that this is like a chairs match, except that Nigerian drums have been placed around the ring and are the only legal weapons allowed. Still not buying this whole T'Challa Cruz angle here. He's more like the Nigerian prince who asks naive fools to send him money. Still waiting on that callback, by the way. Anyway, listen, it's not that I don't like Big E as a solo superstar or even as a champion, but Apollo's been around Raw and SmackDown for seven years now, and all he has to show for it is a U.S. title. Big E's had enough gold around his waist, even though if over half of them did involve the New Day. It's time for Cruz to bang the drums quickly and be a champ. Winner and new champ, Apollo Cruz. Raw Women's Championship. Asuka defends against Rhea Ripley. Well, Ripley wouldn't be the first person to win a title in their first ever match. I dare say she would be the first to win a singles title when her first ever match was at WrestleMania. Ripley has been ripping up the competition in NXT and now seems poised to try for the Grand Slam of women's singles titles, having already captured NXT and NXT UK gold. Now, much like Banks, Asuka hasn't won at WrestleMania yet, let alone won a title match. The question is, has the WWE had enough of Asuka and is just waiting for Io Shirai to arrive on Raw to make the crowds forget about Asuka and look at the new or in Japanese wonder? I would hope now, I would hope not, but again, it seems that Asuka without a title is hardly anything, which means she's hardly anything with it either. Sorry, Asuka, but Charlotte Flair's gonna have to take her 14th title from someone else. Winner and new champ, Ray Ripley. Finally, triple threat match for the Universal Championship. Current champ, Roman Reigns, versus Royal Rumble winner, Edge, versus Daniel Bryan. Ah, shades of WrestleMania 30, when Brian occupied Raw in order to get into the title picture. This time, he's using the facts that A, he never got a fair title shot, B, he made Reigns tap out before Edge concertoed him, and C, this may be his last WrestleMania. But he makes a good point, no matter what Edge or Reigns may say. Plus the fact that Reigns has turned into Brock Lesnar 2.0 and will only compete at pay-per-views, Though to his credit, he does limit it. He doesn't limit it to majors like Lesnar did, and only against weaker opponents. Now Edge has a point too. He fought back for ten years to get an opportunity at a major title, and with his brother sneaking away to AEW, he only has himself to rely on now. And he was the fifth man to go pole to pole in the Royal Rumble, so he has more than deserved it. He seemed to forget that he cashed in for a universal title match, no matter who the champ was at that point. When he banged Brian in the back, he more or less was saying, I want Reigns at WrestleMania, not Brian. Well, tough poutine, hoser. Now you got both. And as I've been rooting for Brian ever since he came back, even during his heel days as WWE champion, you know who I want to win. It's time for Brian to complete the collection with the one non-tertiary title he has yet to win and make WrestleMania into yes mania again. Winner and new champion, Daniel Bryan. Whew. Those are my picks. For those going, stay safe and stay dry. 
For those who want to watch, get that Peacock subscription and hurry! I'm working on night one, but that just means I'll have all Sunday to enjoy all of WrestleMania. I'm Chris Wood with the Wrestling Vlog, who always tells it like it is. Stay safe, get your shots, and I'll see you.